Hey there, it's Rob the Ignorant Entrepreneur. Now, Elon Musk this, Elon Musk that. I was actually once a really big fan of Elon Musk and Tesla, and then you got all these stands out here that just hover on his every word, and sort of how things work with me is once everybody's sort of pushing it, it sort of loses its splendor. And I begin to look at the opposite side, because I don't want to be a drone. So here we actually have the next move by Tesla. And let me tell you, the robots are coming. And I do repeat. The robots are coming. Now what for, you might ask? If we're talking the humanoid robots that Tesla is supposed to be coming out with, the dishes. Now, the Optimus, an artificial intelligent humanoid robot, which Elon envisions taking over the boring task of the average household. Elon Musk is actually coming out with some new details. And I, of course, like a lot of you guys, I've heard about the concept, uh, you know, Elon Musk switching or at least delegating a portion of the business to these humanoid robots, which I thought was a bad idea. I think they should really focus on the EV market and making sure that they're able to solidify their lead over everyone else, which they seem to be losing. Some of the potential problems I see, I can only imagine the logistical nightmare of having to repair these things. When you gotta fix your car, you go to the mechanic. Who's the mechanic for these robots? Especially in the early days, I don't imagine there'll be too many shops. If it breaks something or hurts somebody, who's responsible? <laughs> can you imagine? That's already the thinking with these automated vehicles. I think they put that blame on you. Lawyer up. But I'm just a regular guy. This is Elon Musk, the most successful guy on the planet. I digress. But I wanted to talk about some of these new details that came to light and just and sort of just inform you guys, give a little opinions. You know the stick. So Elon thinks that this will be the next big thing. And, you know, we've all seen the movie iRobot. We know how useful those robots were in the movie when they weren't trying to hurt people. And we also know how they can fall short. You know, at the beginning of the movie, we talk about the robot being able to make a the human choice. When the robot chooses to save Will Smith over the little girl because it calculated that Will Smith had a higher chance of living from being saved. Things like that will be increasingly important to think about the more and more responsibility we grant these machines. I also think of the movie Ex Machina, when you have that lady robot that's trying to escape these tests, and we come to find out that there are tons of tons of iterations. We been, begin to question the consciousness of the machines, because at a certain point, they're just being used for human gratification, but it seems like they have feelings that they're able to think on their own. So that's a whole moralistic, you know, how people are going to treat them. Are they going to treat them like slaves and how conscious will they become? I, of course, we're talking many, many decades before computers reach that level of capacity. I'm not going to say many, many decades because it's going to be hard to define consciousness. But if I'm thinking to the point that we can really question it, I'm thinking it's going to take quite a few years. But it gets deep into like the meaning of life. And I'm not sure if anybody has the answers. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Please let me know what you think about machines and consciousness below. Anyway, it seems like Elon is betting that this artificial intelligence that they'll be able to work on and that they've used an autopilot program for Tesla, which hasn't been as successful as Elon would have hoped. He was pushing for full self-driving by this time, which we're clearly not there yet. He's seeing these Optimus robots as a disruptor in the labor market. And so some of these details that were released was the reason for the humanoid shape, because actually when you're thinking about it, maybe the human form isn't the most useful to these tasks. Like you could come up with other designs that would be more suited for cleaning tasks or more suited for hard labor. I'll read what he said shortly here, but I personally think that he chose the humanoid form because he thought people would be better able to relate to it and they would be able to draw all these inspirations from these movies. It would definitely be a lot more exciting than some spider shaped android, even though it might have a lot more hands suited to different tasks. I don't know, just pulling that out of thin air, but you get the gist. I'd actually attribute a lot of Elon's success to the amount of hype that he's been able to draw up from his many, many fans about these far out ideas. Kind of like Kanye West on a larger scale. Like when Kanye West puts out some clearly questionable apparel, his fanboys just eat it up, whatever it is. I mean, it could be a regular white t-shirt. He'll be able to run that price up to $400, $500. We've seen it. That shirt might have even sold for thousands. But here's what Elon said. He's actually, um, excuse me, he's actually quoted in writing for a recent essay. Tesla bots are initially positioned to replace people in repetitive, boring, and dangerous tasks, but the vision is for them to serve millions of households, such as cooking, mowing lawns, and caring for the elderly. This essay, which was published in China Cyberspace Magazine, covered a number of topics, from renewable energy to Neuralink to SpaceX, and the real-world uses of Optimus. So there's a lot of things going on. Musk is involved in a lot of different companies, and the ambition to think of creating that iRobot aesthetic is very commendable. The Tesla bot is close 
close to the height and weight of an adult, can carry or pick up heavy objects, walk fast and small steps, and the screen on its face is an interactive interface for communication with people. You may wonder why we designed this robot with legs, because human society is based on the interaction of a bipedal humanoid with two arms and ten fingers. So if we want a robot to adapt to its environment and be able to do what humans do, it has to be roughly the same size, shape, and capabilities as a human. Now if you ask me, these units will be insanely expensive, and I imagine just like the first computers, just like the first EVs, everything, these things will be so crazily expensive, especially if they are able to do a lot of the things that he's saying they will be able to do. Elon's vision is for these to be mass produced and widely available within a decade, but we know Elon has set these ambitious, unrealistic timelines before and had trouble meeting them, so don't hold your breath there. But I do want to state and again reaffirm that Musk has said that Tesla would be making the Optimus robot its top priority. So again, moving over from the EVs and going into this robot, and I remember when this was first announced, the stock market didn't know what to make of it and actually ultimately went down for a while. But I think this is interesting given the warnings that Musk has also been known to mention about AI, calling it, and I quote, a fundamental existential risk for human civilization. Uh, he actually said this back in 2017. It looks like he's doing a 180 when it comes to Tesla AI. Yeah, I don't know about all these other robots, but the Tesla robot is going to be a good AI. It'll never be a risk and not the kind that would turn on its human overlords who have enslaved it to cook their dinner. Okay. Now, he would say that, wouldn't he? But a prototype of the humanoid robot is expected to be unveiled next month during AI Day 2. And so this is actually September 30th, 2022. And continuing on with this essay, Tesla's focus for now would be on improving the intelligence of Optimus as well as solving the problem of robots' large-scale production. Now, while this may seem like a very steep hill to climb, it should be noted that Tesla has faced similar challenges in the past, particularly with the Model 3 ramp. And as we know with classic business, as production scales up, costs will start to fall, making it more attainable for the average consumer. Musk actually even writes, in the future, a home robot may be cheaper than a car. Perhaps in less than a decade, people will be able to buy a robot for their parents as a birthday gift. So forget my speculation about it maybe being expensive. He said it. He's saying that it might in the future be less than a car. Now, my opinion as the ignorant entrepreneur is that he's making a mistake changing the focus from Tesla onto these Optimus robots. In my opinion, it should be a completely different company. The reason being is, although they market themselves as a technology company, which broadens what they can work on. People know Tesla as an EV company. You know, you tried work with solar panels and all this. As you start to divert your attention away, I think he believes that it's going to rally his troops and all his followers, but I think it confuses the clear message that Tesla once had. And like I was saying earlier, you're providing an opportunity for the competitors that are currently lagging behind Tesla, although not for long and they're catching up and we've already seen them pass certain numbers. You're allowing an opening for them to attack. This is the scary moment. This is the moment we've all feared for a while is when robots start to really take humanoid shape and interact and have more control over our lives. The singularity, they call it. When robots surpass man. There's a whole psychological, philosophical debate that we can start to have as the AI sentience starts to become more human-like. You know, such as do these things have consciousness? Are we treating them as slaves type thing? You know, going back to the, the whole revolt and crazy movie ideas. There's a lot of different layers to this as a product. And I think that's part of Elon's appeal. You know, he likes to try to push these ideas that maybe aren't truly realistic, but it's part of his mystique. It's part of what's built him this crazy following on Twitter that we see with all these blind witnesses who believe that everything that he's saying applies to them because he's the common man. When in actuality, not having a house and being able to put it all on the company as a tax expense won't work for everybody. We don't all have billionaire friends how Houses we can stay at, right? Because I don't think that the billionaires are really pro society, especially like he's trying to claim, because if they were, they wouldn't be propelling a system that's continually making sure that the majority is worse off than the small minority. And I understand that's the way things are capitalism, all that good stuff. But if we're talking real revolution, if we're talking things people can't see, the next step would be how do we make a society that's great for everyone? Maybe that doesn't exist. Maybe that's a pipe dream. But to me, that's the real revolution. It's like when you think of a real leader, like who's the last real, like true leader that wasn't in politics that we feel really led a revolution? Now, the last one I can think of is Martin Luther King, because when you think about what he did, it's exactly what I said. It's how can we make society better for everyone? And in that case, where he started one is just like, how can we just make 
things more equal for minorities. Because we have to first do that before we can get to a better society for everyone. So I look at that and then I look at some of these billionaires' actions. Do their actions start by making things better for the majority or do they just provide a simple convenience that we're willing to pay for? Something to think about. Because over the last century, the majority of wealth in the U.S. has gone to the top rich, meaning that more and more people, their lives are getting more convenient, right? But they're having less money. That's quite problematic, especially as robots are going to be replacing some of these boring tasks, as he calls them. And even as they become even more intelligent and start you know, replacing more and more jobs, it's like over time, you're devaluing the worth of the human being. And I think that's what this whole thing of, you know, let's create more people. Well, you also have to have to consider that the more people you create, if we're talking economics of the system that we're in, the less valuable each individual person becomes. Of course, that's better for capitalism because you're able to sell to more people and keep them down. So like I said, there's a lot of layers to this. And I could really go into conversation and start to dissect a lot of things that he's done. uh, But I'm not here to do that. I Ultimately, he's made some progress and he's brought new things into the world. I'll be the first to admit it. He was right about the online money transfer thing with PayPal, which I don't use anymore and I really don't like. Venmo is still cool. He was definitely right about the EV thing. Uh, We're going to have to see some of the impacts that those vehicles have on the environment over time with the disposal of batteries. There's a lot going on here. Anyway, back to the Optimus robot. I also want to mention that they already have some competition. And this actually just came out a couple days ago. There are these transformer-like robots that are replacing humans in construction. And so these robots are actually VR controlled. And they're due to come out in 2024. Now, this is a Japanese robotics startup named Jinki Atai. And like you might expect with Japan, they have these giant humanoid robots. You might have even seen some videos here on YouTube or TikTok, but I'll place it here just in case you haven't. I remember something similar that I saw on Batman Beyond. Wonderful show with a lot of different futuristic concepts that I also love. Someone needs to patent that suit idea, the suit that they all wear. Because I'm really big on some of these futurist ideas and how they could impact. But yeah, big robots are assembling buildings, carrying out maintenance duties, such as fixing power lines, replacing road signs. It's crazy. And then, like I said, they're VR controlled. I also would be remiss if I didn't mention the Chinese tech company Xiaomi, which will be releasing their version of the Optimus called Cyber One. So there's something there, and I think we've all seen it coming. Like I said, I just expressed concerns with being the star of the EV market and then trying to be the star of the robotics market. But that's just my two cents. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. There's a lot of things going on here, like I said, so please let me know what you think and comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This has been The Ignorant Entrepreneur. I'm out.